My next guest says that the ultimate goal of a healthy relationship, of healthy relationships across the board, is to develop a secure attachment style, meaning you feel a sense of trust and safety in your marriage and in your other important relationships. The statistics show actually that only 40% of millennials have secure attachment styles. The other 60% or so claim a more anxious or avoidant one. Studio 5 relationship contributor Dr. Matt Townsend wants to bring awareness to this issue. Great to see you. Good to see you. I'm really excited to learn from this you about this. So you say we need to create a more secure attachment style in order to form those stable bonds that will serve you all throughout your yeah. life. Well, and so what this is about is there's a great quote by Carl Rogers that says that the child is father to the man. So how you learned to emotionally attach to people when you were young mm impacts how you attach to them when you're older. But the problem is when we're younger, we're kind of inept, we're weak, we're broken, we can't verbalize, we don't have all the skills we need. So basically, here's the idea. When you're growing up, we need to feel four things. Lovable, capable, that we belong, and that we're safe. When those needs are met, because our caregivers like went overboard to meet those needs and made us lovable, capable, belonging, and safe, or our siblings did, mm -hmm. or our teachers in school, or wherever you had it, then what you do is you just are securely attached. And you can just be you and just relax and live and love people normally. Mm -hmm. When those needs aren't met at whatever age, something changes and fight or flight turns on. So you start to survive handling bonded relationships. So if your parents divorce when you're young, you might realize young that, hold it, people you love can leave? Mm. And the minute that happens, fight or flight turns on. So now the way I approach my relationships is either as a fighter to, to make you like me and keep you liking me, or as a flighter that just doesn't care and runs away. And avoids. And avoids. So those two, those just happen. We used to think only parents could do it. Only parents could mess us up. It's not being messed up. It's life hitting your emotional bonding status. Well, as you talk about it happening at various ages, uh -huh. does that speak to like the m emotional maturity of a person? For yep. some people it might be seven, for yep. some people it might be 17. That's right, that's right. And it could happen in your marriage, in the middle of your marriage when you're 30, because something happened that tipped you over. But the interesting thing about it is what, whenever it happens, you kind of stop progressing at that age. So that's why a lot of times when you're fighting with your partner about something, they almost seem like they're nine. The way you're handling this, like me not being here for you in the morning didn't need this response. Yeah. This is the response of an eight-year-old throwing a fit. Because you go back to that You go point. back to the script that you learned. Wow. And then that script is just how we play relationships. So I see a lot of people that are really successful uh -huh. have built a script to prove how lovable they are. Mm -hmm. And that lovable script is what they carry till they're 55 and they realize I'm still not lovable. And I still feel vulnerable no matter how rich I am, no matter how powerful I am. So eventually what we want to do is start looking back as an adult mm -hmm. and notice the script. Mm -hmm. And we can do it as a partner with a partner. Mm -hmm. And notice the script. And then let's just go heal that script instead of pretending like it's our partner's fault on everything that's happening. Mm, all Does that right. make sense? And why millennials? Why is this striking millennials? So well, I, I just think millennials have, we've over-parented them. Okay. We, you know, we've organized everything in their life for them. And but by the way, it's everyone. My generation, it's about 50%. So everybody okay. has this. Okay. But millennials particularly have been impacted probably because my generation was kind of under-parented. So we tended to overparent, yeah. and when we overparented, that created a whole generation that now isn't sure if they're lovable, capable, belonging, and safe. Unless you organize my play date, I don't know where I belong. <laughs> right? So it starts okay. to create impact. So the ultimate goal is to have that secure attachment yeah. style, as you've described, and you have six questions we can ask ourselves to see, kind of check, yeah, to check our it. attachment. First, do you generally feel good enough about yourself and what you bring to the relationship? So think about you and your partner. This is a good assessment for your partner. Do you feel like what you're bringing to the relationship? relationship is good enough? Do you feel like you're capable? Do you, or every single time something's wrong, do you immediately think, see, I'm a loser, I'm no good. Then what you're doing is literally regressing back to an old script where the fight turns on or the flight turns on. So do you feel like you're bringing enough? And what this is talking about really is your self-worth. The problem with secure attachment is if you don't have it, your self-worth takes a hit. Can you feel emotionally close to your partner and openly express gratitude? Yeah. Can you really openly thank them for how great they are and mean it? And can you openly express um, your deeper feelings and even your insecurities? 
Because if you have a hard time expressing the vulnerable things, you probably learn somewhere not to. Mm -hmm. And that's you probably detaching mm -hmm. and not wanting to be emotionally vulnerable. And by the way, and can your partner? Because so, if they can't yeah, express it, yeah. don't just think it's because they're a guy. It might also be because they grew up where it wasn't safe to. Do you have your own healthy personal interests and relationships outside of marriage? A lot of times in these relationships where they're not securely attached, you have someone that's really clingy, okay. that doesn't want you to have friends, that doesn't want you to go anywhere. Why aren't you home? Get home. So do you have the ability to have your own life, to have your own friends, to have your own interests, and are you good at actually perpetuating and growing yourself in a whole way outside of the relationship. So too. as you describe that, the word controlling comes to mind. Yeah. Is there a correlation uh -huh. there? Yeah. So if someone's really controlling, they tend to have learned to be a fighter for their love. They fight for love. They control for love. They have to make it happen. And when some are that way, a lot of people that are married to them detach and they pull away because this one's controlling too much. I'm suddenly seeing why 50% of people struggle yeah. with this problem. It's a big All right, deal. you feel mostly safe sharing your vulnerable feelings and you can ask for what you need from your partner. Can you voice to your partner what you need from them? Because a lot of us that didn't have these needs met when we were young, we didn't have a voice because we were eight and nobody listened to us. So you may have learned not to voice. So you sit there and you want your partner to hug you and touch you, but you don't want to bring it up. So then you silently stew. Mm -hmm. And what you feel is unloved, but they hug the kids. That man, they're all over the kids, but no one's hugging you. So if you don't have the voice to say it, you probably have a script from a younger age. Which is sad. It's it, super sad. You know, I mean, you think of there, there can be loneliness yeah. in a partnership and loneliness right. in a marriage. And to think that it's hanging over your head from 10 years yeah. ago. And then, you, and then if you go back to your self-worth and you feel like a loser and you don't feel like you're not good enough. Because Stacy never feels these things. Mm -hmm. But Stacy also might be securely attached. You can hear the needs and the feedback of your partner without easily feeling attacked, unwanted, or inadequate. If you see anybody that's super reactive to feedback to, I don't want to be touched that way. Do it touched this way. Uh -huh. Anybody that reacts to that is somebody that probably has a really raw emotional spot about feedback. Okay. And they probably learned it young. And so all of a sudden, you can't even give the feedback because they'll blow up. And they don't even ask for feedback because they could, they could correct you and give you feedback, but they don't dare. So the minute we have these weird systems, then all of a sudden the relationship just starts to kind of die. And finally, do you make a best effort to respond to most of your partner's needs or make time to communicate yeah. your own feelings? Is it crystal clear that you are in the relationship? Or does it seem like you're always nitpicking it or running from it? If it's not clear that you're totally in and not needing to be in, not having to be in, mm -hmm. but in because it's healthy and good, mm -hmm. are you showing that regularly? Because if you're not, so if you have your partner a lot of times telling you, I don't even know if you're in, like you're never here, you never, if you're hearing that from them, you might be actually detached from the relationship. So is it fair to say it's, it's rare to be securely attached? Well, it's, a, it's, it's actually not rare because you might be more securely attached with friends and okay. other people. Okay. But it's where this is, is in your most intimate, vulnerable relationships are the hardest because it's where you're most vulnerable. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of unvoiced um, expectations on our partner to meet these needs. Mm -hmm. This is fixable. Don't think like you're des just destined to be done. So the script no. this is your script forever. But, but the key to this is quit making your partner your problem. The problem is your attachment style. And if your attachment style is too anxious or too avoidant, that has nothing to do with your partner right now. That has to do with wherever you learned it. And if you're way immature about it, you learned it early, or you may have learned it in your first marriage or your second marriage, but that's weirdly what perpetuates a third, fourth, and fifth marriage, right? Is if we can't safely attach and we don't recognize that it's my attachment, then we try to fight everything else instead of honestly saying, you know what, I think what's happening right now is my little kid is starting to vibrate weird mm -hmm. and I'm feeling insecure. Mm -hmm. So can you just sit with me mm -hmm. and just help me feel more secure mm -hmm. in this moment? Because I don't want to react and run and do what I normally do. So I can actually voice that yeah. as an adult. Yeah. And when I do, I overwrite the, the earlier script. So now my adult changes it. It's a big problem. It's an important topic, though. And yeah. you're going to take it on for us during yeah. this next month of We're June. We're going to take the next month. Because it's another program I'm launching called Becoming One, which is uh, basically a tribe I'm trying to build of all of us getting together and learning to do this together. Awesome. Becoming One together. You
at Townsend for that. Okay. Or you can also go look at our 10 day marriage makeover, which is a really good tool to start turning this around. These programs are, are changing yeah, lives, Matt. You're cool. What we've heard in the studio today, just feedback from guests and visitors on, on what a difference you're making in people's lives. So thank, thank you. you. And I'll say, if you love Matt and you love Jesus, I loved your podcast. Yeah, wasn't that good? The Come Follow yeah. podcast. Yeah, follow him with uh, Hank Smith and, and John, John Byler. It was fantastic. I listened it really to it cool. start to finish. It was honored to be so there. So thanks for your gifts. Thanks, we appreciate Brooke. you. MattTownsend.com, everybody.